Hey everybody, this is Cardboard Pie, continuing our three-part series on how to make a rainbow text effect. I'm going to show off something I, I did off-screen. I, I worked on the code a bit to a gradient effect on our text, so that way it has a, a much better look to it. I'll show off what I did and then we'll get started with the uh, playing selective effects on it. So all I did was I created that C1 color. I changed the start off value of C0 to be the zero value in our gradient text. And then when we're setting our color, instead of getting C0, we set C1. And then after we set all the vertex colors, I set C0 to be the value of C1. That way it kind of blends a little bit better going into the next character. So without further ado, let's get started. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a string called check text. Private void check text. I'm going to call check text here before we start animating the colors. We're going to add a variable. It's going to be a string called string to effects. It's going to make it empty for right now. And add to ints, private int start at our ending location. So this way that we don't iterate throughout the entire text, we're just going over the text that we're specifying in string to effect. We want to check if we're going throughout the entire text, so I'm going to make a reference to our text here. So it'll be from our text component, this m text component here, and then we just say text. We're going to make an array of strings. It's only going to hold one value. It's going to be called our separator, and it's going to be containing our string effect. And then we need to check if the if the string to effect is actually inside our main text. So we can do a quick main text dot contains string to effect. If it does, then we do some logic here. We're going to do start at is equal to main text dot index of. We can just do string to effect, and our end at is going to be start at plus the length of the string. So string to effect dot length. Here we're just going to do some quick stuff for the next episode. It's just going to be another string array. I'm going to call this string holder. And it's going to be the main text being split upon the string to effect. So that way it contains everything that doesn't that isn't the the string that we're looking for. And here we're going to need to use a system so that we can specify even further that the string split options, we want to get rid of any empty entries. And then we can do a quick little check for later. We can find out how many instances of the word string to effect we have. So it's just string holder length minus one. So we'll be using that more later on in the next episode. But I just wanted to get that started here for right now. So this should be not string to effect, but separator. That'll essentially be we're separating with string to effect. So we're going to create a little helper for enemy vertex colors. I'm going to call it private bool in between, and it's going to take in three ints, int check value, int start, and int end. And all we need to do is return if check value is inclusively in between those values. So it's greater than or equal to start, and check value is also less than or equal to end. So if we go down to our code here, what we want to affect is when we change the color. So we wanted to make sure that it's in between current character and our start at and at. Oh, one quick thing I forgot. So in the case when uh, the string to effect doesn't contain it, we want to set our start and end values appropriately. So start at will be zero, so the beginning of the text, and end at will just be the end of the text. So main text dot length. Yes. If there's any issues, just I'll remember to put minus one at the end. I'm going to do that now just in case. Minus one, minus one here. All right, so we only color it when we're at the in between our start and end. I'm going to set current character to start at immediately so that way we don't have to go through the entire text and hit that spot in our text. And then here, instead of character count, we're going to change this to end at plus one. And then we want to check if we aren't in between this value because sometimes when we do the modulo it'll send us back to zero and if we're at zero that means we're somewhere at the beginning of our text and we don't want to be at the beginning of our text. We want to be at the beginning of the string that we specified to affect. So just if we are not in between we simply just want to set our current character equal to start. And that should be 
it. Let's go back to Unity, see if there's any issues. So I'm going to put rainbow. This is going to be case sensitive, by the way. Okay, so it works perfectly. So now we see that it works with specific characters in mind in your text. And so if you wanted this to be case insensitive, what you could do is you could turn uh, main text and do two lower, I believe. So this would either lowercase all of them or you can do two upper to uppercase everything. And then you would make sure your string effect gets that same two lower or two upper. Make sure it's consistent with both. One thing I do want to talk about, even though this is only working on specific text that we do. If we have another case where, where we have that same word, only the first instance of it will have the rainbow effect. The second one will not. And any other instances will also not be having the rainbow effect. So that's something that we're gonna focus on the last episode. And that'll be the final part of the three part series. So hopefully if you guys enjoyed this video, I really appreciate that. I, I do like making these videos. See you guys later, I guess. Bye.